welcome to Enox Engineering, I'm Alan. In today's video we're looking at how to set the lathe up ready for milling. I'll show you what I made on my Boxford and how I set it up for milling. So let's go into the workshop, see how we do it. Okay, the Boxford lathe. Now if I want to do milling in the lathe I need to add a z-axis up and down because we already have that axis x you have y on your top slide so we need to alter some things to get a z-axis and what I've done on this machine taken off my tool holder then I can take this compound slide off by undocking these two screws off and this should now lift up this is held on the back here just by this dovetail so if I can replicate this dovetail in a hole on an angle plate so to hold the compound slide vertically so what I made when I was an apprentice and that's going back over 50 years is this there's two pieces of steel I've welded them together to form an angle plate I mean, you might be able to find an angle plate that you can do this with on the bottom I've machined the dovetail which is an exact copy of the compound slide dovetail and on the front I've machined two holes just parallel and in each hole I've put these grub screws that push a bar through, take this one out you can see it's just the bar with the taper on that matches the angle on your dovetail on the bottom of the compound slide so I can turn this round on this one I put a flat here and mark the zero position but you don't need that, you can just run a dial indicator across holding it in your chuck to get that parallel with the slide then just lock it down using your original compound slide screws on each side And then take your compound slide and place it in it. It could be the lower one or the upper one, depending on what what you want to mill. Tighten the screws up on this. That now gives you your z-axis in the lathe. And all you need to do now is get some way of holding your component onto the lathe. Swivel this round so you can see. What I did was buy a small machine vise, made two T-nuts that will just slide in there Obviously I'll tighten those up and that gives you a vice you can use on the face. So now turn that back round, set it back to zero, lock it up. So now you have your z-axis. and that will give you about four inches of movement if you need it lower you can drop it into the lower hole but that gives you the ability then to mill on the lathe in your headstock I have a collet holder ER32 that will hold a range of collets up to about 12 millimeters the end mill fits in the Call it, hold it, tighten that with the spanner but hold it in the lathe 
and you need your draw bar on the back of the machine to stop his, co his collet holder coming out. Now the reason you need that is using an end mill you're putting more vibration onto the headstock than you would if you're turning in the lathe. So to stop that vibration loosening the collet you can see here I fitted my draw bar which goes from the back to the front and pulls the collet into the spindle. You see on that that a collet has the equivalent of about eight jaws depending on the size of the collet compared to a chuck with three or four so it grips the cutting tool tighter and more evenly spread around the outside of the cutting tool less chance of it pushing back into the headstock as you're cutting on something and you have the advantage that you can swivel this around to give you an angle Oh well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Hope that was useful and we'll see you next time on Enots Engineering.